What's up, everybody? Welcome to the next episode of the Corn Ticket Podcast. We are here with a good friend of ours, Kirk Byerly, and he's got a pretty cool organization that he's a part of. Um, we're going to get into that. Howie, haven't seen you in a while. How you doing, buddy? Oh, you know, living the dream. How's the house coming along? Slow and jerky, like always. Yeah. But anyways, all right. Well, thanks for joining us, and let's get to it. Go! The Corn Thicket Podcast with Kyle and Howie, presented by Realtree. Well, welcome, Kirk. Uh, good to finally have you on here. Uh, talk about some camo cares and hunt a lifetime. So, obviously, a great organization that I've been involved with off and on. You know, when I've been been around uh, in Western Pennsylvania for for quite a handful of years. I know Kyle was was there as well, but you're more deeply involved than anyone uh, with your with your crew up there pulling that off every year. So, uh, can you give us a little background on what you got going on? Yeah, first of all, thanks. Uh, appreciate the invite to be uh, to be part of the podcast. Uh, we, we've definitely talked about it a few times, and uh, I'm glad to finally make it happen. So thank you. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. It has been it has been a minute because I think we were trying to do this the week after Camo Cares, which was when was that this year? It's always the third week of June. Third week of June. Yeah, so we're a little late. We're a little late. It's February, it's, but better late than never. It's coming right so, up, just like Christmas. So we're good. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, and by the way, just get it right out, right out of, the, right out of the way. You had the better photographer there last year. Just, just so we're clear, the better photographer was there snapping his shots for, for the event because I was able to make it. Although he did bring his dog and he wasn't supposed to. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Kyle. Did I tell you about that? No, you didn't. I go rolling in to Camo Cares this year to do photographs for it. And I drive the whole way up there and I have Marlo with me and I drive the whole way up there and there's signs everywhere, like everywhere. As soon as I hit the driveway to pull in, it's like no pets, no dogs, no dogs, absolutely no dogs, no freaking dogs. We said no dogs. Like there's signs everywhere. <laughs> I'm like, I'm two hours from home and I brought my dog. <laughs> like, I don't know what to do here. So I just took my dog in. And, you know, Marlo, he's kind of human anyway. Yeah, but, it was all uh, right. It was no big deal. I mean, I, I did get some strange looks and, and we did have a discussion about it later. And as a matter of fact, um, we negotiated uh, with the Freiburg Sportsman's Club. Uh, the event will be held um, there again this year at the Freiburg Sportsman's Club. But we just negotiated their camping rates um, for the weekend with them today. And as soon as they, as soon as we signed off on all that stuff, the very first thing they, their president said was, oh, by the way, um, do we need to clarify um, no dogs? I'm like, nope, no clarification needed. We're good. Yeah, sorry about that. It's so anyway, it's all good. getting into we'll all get the good, good things stuff. that happen <laughs> up there. You, you know, you, uh, you obviously have a, have a great organization running an incredible event that raises an absolute ton of money for the best combination of causes that you can possibly get into for, for hunters and sportsmen and, and, and outdoors people in general. Um, raising money to, to send kids for a hunt of a lifetime, as well as wounded veterans, you know, folks who have given so much for, for this country. And I know it's a, it's obviously a cause that's near and dear to your heart. Um, so, I, I mean, I know I just kind of explained it a little bit there, but I know there's a lot more that goes into it, how long you've been running, uh, the, the amount of money that you have raised. Uh, and I apologize, I'm getting beat up by my dog who's insisting on pets here. Cause I think they know we're talking shit on them. Absolutely. But, um, but yeah, I'll turn it over to you to give a little bit of that background, how it all got started, how you got involved in it, um, and the details of, of you know, the what, why, and how, uh, how this all goes down. Yeah, I mean, Camo Cares was started back in 2010. So uh, this June will be our 14th year. Um, it's, been, uh, it's been an amazing ride. Um, in the beginning, I was just a volunteer. I was just one of the guys that, uh, that bought into the mission um, you know, the, the event itself, the event itself was started by Kyle and Jason, um, and they wanted to put together, um, after seeing an idea from another, another one of our field staffers, um, Teresa Patterson, some of her relatives had seen where people were raising money to send kids on their dream hunts. Um, that's kind of how the basis of Camo Cares got started. It was, it was the brainchild of, of, uh, Kyle and, and Jason. And, um, 
it just kind of started off with a handful of volunteers um, inviting some of their closest friends to to an archery shoot to raise money to see if we could uh, you know pull some funds together to to maybe send a couple of kids uh, on a dream hunt. And so you fast forward um, from 2010 through last year. Uh, in 13 years, we've raised just under $1.5 million, um, enough to send close to 400 kids and vets on their dream hunts. So it's been an amazing ride. Um, it's been an amazing ride. Um, Jason backed out um, up from the organization in 2018, I think it was. That's when I came on board. Um, it's kind of a cool little story. Um, I had met with. Uh, Ariana Evans's family um, in early, it was late 2018, early 2019. And um, we kind of had a tradition where we met at the pizza shop in Knox for dinner every once in a while. Um, right. And after Ariana had passed away, it was a few months, but the family decided it was time for us to have dinner again at the pizza shop. And we were all kind of looking for enough strength to be able to get together after her passing to be able to do that. But we wanted to do it in her honor and her memory. And so we sat at the big round table at the pizza shop for those of that, that have been to the pizza shop in Knox, there's a big round community table right in the middle of the, of the dining room. And we sat at the table and, and we had dinner just like it was old times. And, uh, it had weighed heavy on my heart with Jason backing out of, you know, of camo cares the the organization you know and i wasn't part of the board at that time i was always just a volunteer but it weighed heavy on my heart you know they had talked about maybe not continuing and you know there could they find enough volunteers was there going to be enough leadership there to be able to take it over and make it happen and i tell you it did weigh heavy on my heart and there was you know a lot of pros and a lot of cons and and it takes up a lot of time and and uh <clears throat> so i did I, I thought about it a lot and i prayed about it a lot and we're sitting there at dinner we get through dinner and i thought i made it the whole way through dinner without bill or laura asking me about camo cares and whether it was going to continue and if you talk to the Evans's family, the Evans family, they'll tell you Camo Cares was Ariana's Christmas. Like that was the day that she looked forward to the most of any other day of the year. And I thought, man, I made it the whole way through dinner and the subject of Camo Cares didn't come up. And so we 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 paid our bill and we were getting ready to leave. And, and Laura said, you didn't think you were getting out of here without me asking, did you? And I said, well, I was kind of wondering. And she said, what are we doing? Is there going to be a camo cares? Are we doing a camo cares? What is going on? And I said, I'll be honest with you, Laura. I don't know if I can do it. I said, I don't know if I have enough time with some of the other organizations that I'm involved with and, and with my job. And she said, okay. I said, you know, I've prayed hard about it and, and I've, I've looked for some guidance. And I said, I'm just, I'm just waiting for a sign that tells me that this is what I, that, what I'm going to do or what we're not going to do. And I swear to you, as, as sure as I'm sitting here talking to you right now, the front door of the pizza shop opens and the first person in the door is wearing a camo cares t-shirt. And she said, there, how about that? How about that? Is that a sign? I said, hmm, dumb luck, dumb luck. And, uh, and you can't make this stuff up. The very next two people that came in that door three people in a row wearing three different camo care shirts. She said, if that's not your sign, I don't know what is. So I made the decision. I made the decision that night that this is probably something that I was called to do or meant to do. So I met with the board and uh, they decided that if I was going to be willing to take it on and, and, and be the president and run the organization that we would continue. And that was uh, five years ago. So onward and upward. Here we are. We're we're back at it. We're continuing to raise money and and send these uh, these kids on their dream hunts. So you mentioned you mentioned a lot of things there, um, and obviously that no 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 that's good that's good that's lots of talking points here lots of things to cover. Um, 
So first of all, you mentioned, you know, the archery shoot, and we yeah. do know that is a critical part of it. it is. Um, but we do know that camo cares is way more than that as well. Right. There's yeah. an archery shoot. Um, there were a lot of years where there were live music until way too late in the night. <laughs> <laughs> we've all got uh, some pretty foggy memories of some of those wrap ups because the celebration afterwards has to justified is justified by the greatness that happens during the day. Sure. Um, unprecedented, unmatchable raffles that happen there. The donations uh, are just insane. Um, the food's always great. I mean, for, for folks who aren't familiar, uh, the the hunting club where, where this is held is, is is very expansive. It's it's in the middle of nowhere, and it's just got field after field, and there's just so much room to spread out, and there's so many great pavilions. The the facilities are unmatched, and I mean there's cornhole tournaments. There's just I I, I mean you could probably rattle off the top of your head, and and we'll get back to that. Sure. Um, but. So as it as it works, you you are you still paired up with Hunt of a Lifetime? We are. We absolutely are. Okay. So so Hunt of a Lifetime is that is a great organization that that takes children, takes youth, right? Typically youth on on their hunt of a lifetime. Kids who have you know debilitating illnesses and, and terminal illnesses and such. Um, but every year, just for those who's, who are listening, essentially one child one child from Hunt of a Lifetime. And one veteran are kind of selected to be the face of Camo Cares that that year, right? That correct. And Ariana, who you were referring to earlier, was one of the ones early on. I it was believe the that. very first. The very first, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And unfortunately, as you mentioned, uh, she's since passed away. But um, anyone who has a chance that's listening, you know, hop on YouTube, look for Camo Cares Hunt of a Lifetime Hunts, and pack the tissues. That none of them are easy. They are incredible and incredible all around as far as the services that folks offer. And I do want to talk a little bit about that too, about the, you know, how you get connected to guides, how people would reach out if they're, if they're interested in, in hosting, you know, one of the children or one of the vets um, in that. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to clarify for folks who are listening who, who Ariana was uh, and who she continues to be, right. you know, through, through the process and, and everything that she's done for that. So how many years into it, uh, was it from the beginning that the wounded vets were involved as well, or was it, did that get added on after the beginning, after it was kicked off? No, they got added on later. It was four or five years into it. Um, the, the event was so successful and, and we had raised so much money or enough money that it, it warranted looking at another venue or another opportunity, um, you know, to share the spoils. And so we went um, from just, of a lifetime and children with life-threatening illnesses to combat wounded veterans. And uh, there was a lot of research that went into it in the beginning to find the right organization to partner with. You know, we, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to bash any organizations out there that are, that are doing things to support our veterans, but some of them have a lot less overhead and a, and a lot less high paid management than others. Let's just put it that way. Or, um, so we worked really hard to find um, a veterans organization that we could partner with where a majority of the money went to the veterans themselves. And, and that organization that we chose ended up being the Military Warrior Support Foundation. Um, they're based out of Texas and they will tell you and, 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 it, and they're very proud that of all the money they raise, less than 5% of the money they bring in is overhead. So. Um, you know, more than 95% of the money that comes in is going to the vets. They're, they're providing housing, awesome. they're providing, um, cars, they're providing, um, skills for life is a, is a, a branch of their organization that we work with. And they're the ones providing hunts to those combat wounded veterans. So, you know, it's probably important to say, you know, you mentioned about how we deal with outfitters and, and find the hunts and stuff like that. Camo Cares doesn't do any of that. We are simply the money okay. generator. We are raising the funds, and it's actually part of our bylaws, part of our 501c3. The only money that we spend goes to other 501c3 nonprofit organizations. So we are the money generator. We raise the funds, and then we distribute them to those folks that we've partnered with. You know, so we've mentioned Hunt of a Lifetime. I've mentioned uh, Military Warrior Support Foundation. Uh, in the in the last few years, we've added a handful 
more just because we've done so well with the event. Um, we added an organization out of Eastern Pennsylvania called the One Wish Foundation. Uh, Jared Reniger and his crew out there have done amazing things. They uh, they are also taking children um, with, you know, disabilities and life-threatening illnesses on hunts. And then just last year, we also partnered with another organization called Wounded Heroes Hunting Camp. And it's kind of a funny story um, how that works. Um, we were coming home from the Colton Sutley hunt in Oregon a couple of years ago, and we were standing at baggage claim in Pittsburgh and a gentleman walked up to me and I, I mean, I had a camo cares t-shirt on. I think Colton might've been in camo, but we were waiting for our bags, which they come off the carousel and his bag was a camo hunting bag. And a guy walked up to us and he just started talking. He said, were you guys on a hunting trip? And, and I said, yeah, we were just out on Colton's hunt of a lifetime. He just shot a ginormous eight by seven elk in uh in oregon and so the guy wanted to hear the story and he's like it's so weird that that my flight was late and it put me in the same spot at the same time and he was the local western pa rep for wounded heroes hunting camp and uh we just started having a conversation and then we exchanged numbers and we started talking after that and they're doing the same thing they they are taking wounded combat veterans on their dream hunts so it's just it's funny that the the situations that you get put in and the dots that get connected um the signs that just keep coming yeah we call yeah. them god dots the god just yeah. keeps connecting the dots for sure yeah that's awesome so i'm going to put you on the spot a little bit Go and then i'm going to let kyle talk because so he doesn't fall asleep but um, <laughs> not that he falls asleep he just you know i've been talking the whole time and between you and me kirk i don't think we let kyle get a word in edgewise but it's um, his own fault it was it <laughs> yeah, he's so shy. That's his problem. You see him on Twitter. He's a real quiet kind of guy. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's when the cameras get rolling. I can't. I, I get a little nervous. <laughs> uh, turn your camera off. Uh, <laughs> we wouldn't be mad about that anyway. Uh, so, so Kirk, <laughs> I, I'm going to assume that Ariana's one. Of, her hunt is one of your one of your favorites, and I know it's impossible to choose between all of them, but there still has to be one of those ones that's been filmed. Another one that really stands out. I mean, I've seen them all. There's some that are so incredible. And, and, um, you know, could you tell us about a couple of your favorites, you know, some of the physical limitations facing the, facing the, the youth or the, or the, uh, or the veterans who are out there, uh, some of the turns of events that happen. I mean, I know some of these things come right down to the wire and God connecting the dots or however you want to phrase it, you know, always yeah. seems to almost always seems to put, make it happen right at the last minute, um, you know, overcoming incredible odds. So can you share a couple of stories of the, of the experiences that your organization has been able to, you know, make happen for, for some of these individuals? Yeah, that's uh, actually a pretty easy, uh, pretty easy question for me to answer. Um, and one of the things that, um, you know, one of the hunts that actually sucked me in uh, even deeper into the camo carers family uh, obviously, my relationship with Ariana and the Evanses, that was special, but um, probably the first hunt that, that jerked a lot of the tears right out of my, my eyeballs was the Douglas Fickle hunt. Um, Douglas Fickle was on a, a moose hunt in Maine, and I believe it was Maine, but um, the kid was faced with unprecedented um, illnesses and diseases on, you know, leukemia and cancer on top of his ATS. And, uh, he was confined to a wheelchair, 600 pound wheelchair. And, you know, he had, a, a rifle that was mounted on his wheelchair with, uh, optic laser sights, like just, just crazy. The, the obstacles that were put in front of him as far as being able to go on a hunt and on a moose hunt, you know, those things, the, the big moose aren't just hiding around every tree um, when you're trying to kill one. But long story short, um, they located a moose in a broccoli field. They were able to get him out of the van, down the wheelchair ramp, out in the field into position. And with a few calls, I mean, the moose just walked right out. Him and his dad were able to get the, the, the gun lined up and he was able to put a perfect shot and you got to watch the video. You can actually see the entrance and maybe this is too gory, but you can see the entrance hole. And as the moose is walking away, you can see the steam coming out of the exit and entrance holes. And, and then 
his reaction, his dad's reaction. Um, they made a phone call to his mom and his mom came out running through the broccoli field. I mean, just the emotion, um, you know, that was shared amongst the family and the memories that that, that, that family made on that hunt. It's what sucked me in. I mean, that, you know, I, I was a part of it and, and I did what I had to do to, you know, to be a good volunteer. But after that video and then subsequent years actually spending time with the family at Camo Cares, um, we are truly a big family. Like the relationships um, that we've developed with the families, both the military vets and the kids, uh, some of my best friends in the entire world, and I love them all to death. But that video, you know, the Douglas Fickle hunt was one. Um, the second one was the Austin Dracula hunt, and he was a young man out of Erie, Pennsylvania, that had uh, a brain tumor. And they were out in Idaho, and they were hunting, and they had an enormous crew of people. Um, I think there was seven, eight, nine people on the mountain with Austin, including his dad, traipsing around public land in Idaho. I mean, you guys are both hunters, right? You know, yeah. you know what it's like to try to keep from being spotted and scented from a whitetail, okay? Well, an elk is no different. Their sense of smell and sense of uh, their eyesight is just every bit as good as a whitetail, okay? So and, you and know, there's always like 40 of them together. Yeah, and, <laughs> but you know what it's like to try to, to keep from being detected from these things, right? Sure. It's difficult. Yeah. So there's, there's Austin and his dad and their guides, several guides, a cameraman, Kyle Schwabenbauer was the cameraman, but there's seven, eight, nine guys huddled up on the side of the mountain trying to call an elk in. Um, and this is another one of those, it was meant to be, it was literally just meant to be. They're on public land. They were looking across, looking across a, a big valley at the other side, hoping for an elk that they had spotted earlier, a pretty good elk to, to work its way into an opening. Well, if you've seen the video, that elk actually comes up through the valley, up through the canyon, turns and walks straight up the hill to seven, eight, nine guys huddled on the side of the mountain trying to not smell bad and not move. And that elk walks right up the hill, turns broadside at 20 feet and gives Austin the opportunity to take that trophy bull. And, and he put a, a heck of a shot on that bull and it, tumbled down the hill, but I mean, it's another one. The, the recovery part of that video, once the elk is, is down the whole crew, they, they, they make their way down the hill and, and the elk expired in the creek below and they all make their way down there. And, and Austin is just sitting there and he's just staring at this thing and he's just in awe. And, and he asks if he could say a few words and he asks if he can pray over the elk and, and over the hunt and over all the people that provided through camo cares for that hunt and hunt of a lifetime. And literally, I mean, you just, they just need, people just need to go watch that video. They can go to camocares.org and they can click on the video and, and look for the Austin Dracula video. If, if you want to know what camo cares is and, and who we are and, and why we do what we do, that video is the epitome of, of why we do what we do. Yeah. And just one point of clarification, it was a broccoli thicket. Just, I mean, you know. <laughs> My bad. On. Broccoli field. What are we talking uh, about here? Kirk, so. I pick up something there that you were talking about. Um, just one quick question. Yeah. Um, you you mentioned after you shot that elk, it went to the what? It went to the creek? It went to the stream. Do you, how do you spell? How do you spell that word? Stream. S-T-R-E-A-M. Went to the crick. Uh, CR. No, anyways, on a, on a more serious note, I know you guys usually pick one hunt a year to go film and put on, make a video out. And like you, like you said, you go to camocares.org, you can watch those videos. Um, and you guys usually have what one family, two, well, you guys have more like three or four featured families at the event. Um, do you know how about how many around about number, how many hunts you, the event provides per year? Yeah, in total, um, over the last 13 years, with the money we raised, that $1.5 million, and it depends on what number you choose to, uh, to decide, you know, what number you choose to decide how much a hunt costs, but we're typically looking at like 
400 hunts in total that we've provided for. So not just the one kid and the one vet each yeah. year. Those are just the, as, as Howie mentioned, the, the folks that we've chosen to be our spokespeople for, for lack of a better term for those years. But there's a whole bunch of other hunts that take place behind the scenes that don't get filmed. But in total, it's been somewhere just under 400 hunts so far that we've been able to fund through Camo Cares. Well, and that, that's and that number that that's you came. Kind of point. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Kyle. No, go ahead. That's kind of the point I was going to make that um, I know you, it's just one hunt a year that you pretty much just see. Right. But behind the scenes, you guys are doing so much more than just that one. And right. it's pretty freaking amazing. It's uh, it's it's an amazing it's an amazing organization and an amazing experience, you know, and and, you know, we didn't talk about a lot of the details yet. And, and maybe we'll have the opportunity to do that and maybe we won't. But, you know, this is a 100 percent volunteer organization. We have no paid employees from myself to our executive board to the 180 people that donate their time during the event, you know, we got 180 people that come just and say, Hey, tell me what you want me to do. I'll take the garbage out. I'll clean the bathrooms. I'll take the pictures, Howie, with my dog. Um, you know, but <laughs> he's coming again this year. It's a 100% volunteer <laughs> organization, you know, in the, in the little town of, of Knox, Pennsylvania, Clarion County that that's pulling this stuff together. It's just, uh, there's a whole bunch of people, a whole bunch of like-minded people with big hearts drinking the same Kool-Aid. It's uh, it's it's pretty phenomenal event, and I'm I'm pretty proud to be part of it. I I, I want to clarify one thing. I, I mean, you you mentioned 13 years because I know people are going to be doing the math, right? Thir you're you're looking at basically six figures, and and there's a couple of things I want to mention on that. But did you have one in 2019? We did. Or 2020. I'm sorry. We did. Did you have one during COVID? You were able to do that. We did. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure if it was actually still 13, but, um, the, the, the thing that always struck me is, you know, you see those totals come out and you're just like, it's mind boggling, right? I mean, you're, you're, you're flirting with or, or over consistently. I, you know, I, I don't know if you have those numbers offhand, but on a yearly basis, I mean, we're, we're seeing, you know, six figures for a one day event. And I know it's obviously, as you mentioned, you're planning it now, right? So it's not a one day event. It's a year long event that culminates into one day, but what folks need to understand, this is in Freiburg, Pennsylvania. This is not like, you know, in, in down where I am, this isn't, you know, just north of Pittsburgh or something where folks are just, you know, where there's doctors and attorneys around every single corner. And I mean, this is in, this is in Podunk. This place is in the middle of nowhere. And I think it's just a testament to, you know, the hunting community and to the community of small towns that build into, you know, the community of communities around there. Right. Um, I know you get donations from, from larger areas, but um, I, I would think a fair amount of them are relatively local and it just speaks to the strength of, of, you know, this part of the world, frankly. And, and, and again, that hunting community to, to really come together. And I think it, what you already mentioned is, is critical. I just want to reiterate that it's all volunteer. Right. People love knowing that their money's going directly to. Right. They don't want to be used for, for gas in the tractor that's going to mow it beforehand. Right. I mean, that's just, um, you know, mow, mow, mow off the place so everybody can hang out and party. It's it's really nice that people can look at it and say this all goes to where we need it to go to. And when they watch those videos, they know that they had some small part in, in making that. And you know, three hundred ninety nine other hunts, hunts go on. So, um, have you identified the? the families for this year yet or how, how does that process go about? Are they nominated or how does that work? <laughs> it's uh, I don't, when I figure it out, I'll let you know. Okay. Um, no. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's kind of a little bit of a process. Um, you know, obviously we are trying to um, find local kids local to us. You know, if there's a, if there's a tie to the community, it certainly is a lot easier for us. Um, to pull on the heartstrings um, if this is a, a kid that you're seeing every day or a kid that you're hearing about every day or 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 something like that. So um, we get typically, I'll call them leads from Hunt of a Lifetime. Um, their organization shares with us kids that have been vetted. They've been through the 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 paperwork process. So they they you know they've been they they haven't identified disease. They have. Um, let's just say been vetted by hunt of a lifetime. They share with us a list of 
of kids. And then we have the opportunity to reach out to a kid that's local. Um, the last few years, we've been very for, uh, fortunate. It's not the right word. Um, it's never fortunate for these kids to be diagnosed and, and to be put through what they've been put through. But we've we've been fortunate enough to have local kids. Uh, Colton Sutley, a few years ago, was uh, from Oil City High School, um, a local kid here. And then uh, last year, the the Knight girls, uh, Sydney Knight and and her sister Brooklyn Alderette, um, were were our Hunt of a Lifetime, uh, the face of Hunt of a Lifetime uh, for us for Camo Care. So um, they were both local, um, and a, and a majority of the kids have been local. Some of them have been as far as two or three hours away in Ohio. You know, for the most part, that's been local. But again, this year. Um, just in the last few weeks, uh, we've identified a young man by the name of David Wiles from Clarion, Pennsylvania, and he is currently battling uh, small intestine cancer. Um, there was a couple fundraisers locally for him that, that I had heard about um, through Facebook and then um, reached out to some friends of his family that I was mutual friends with and said, Hey, I'm not sure what his status is, but he needs to look into hunt of a lifetime. You know, if he's a, if he's a hunter and it's something that he's interested in and, and long story short, he was able to get his paperwork turned in and, and he was just recently approved for his hunt of a lifetime. So he will be going out West to hunt elk this fall. Oh, awesome. That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So what, what's the footprint of, we talked about the veterans organization a fair bit. Uh, I want to focus on the hunt of a lifetime for a second, uh, just in a little more detail. So um, are they regional or are they national? Hunt of a lifetime is national. They have ambassadors all over the country. Okay. And Cause I know the ambassadors, I think one of the things that really attracted me to their organization was, you know, even the folks who, the ambassadors, I'm, I'm sure those are the ambassadors that show up locally to your event. Um, you know, these folks aren't rolling in in, in $80,000 pickups and the same kind of thing. I mean, you can tell these people give everything they have 365 days a year into this organization that they know is so meaningful in providing critical memories to, to so many kids and not just those kids. I mean, that's the other thing that I, get, I think sometimes gets overlooked a little bit is you're providing memories to those children, but when you, you know, as you know, you're a dad, we're all dads on here, right? You see that, you see the parents who are there for it. You see the rest of the family who's there for those, for those hunts. And you know that, you know, no matter the prognosis, no matter how things turn, and we always hope obviously for the best and that they live a long, you know, a long and healthier life as they move forward. But those memories are going to be cherished beyond measure for the people who are sometimes unfortunately left behind. Right. And um, to, there's no, there's no value that can be put on that. I mean, it's, it's completely, you know, over the top for that. But uh, yeah, if you could speak about Hunt of a Lifetime and, and the, the individuals who, you know, you interact with from that organization, that'd be, that'd be great. Yeah, no problem. Uh, 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 like us, Hunt of a Lifetime um, from the top to the bottom is all 100% volunteer organization as well. And they are a national organization. As I mentioned, they, they do a lot of fundraising. Um, I know Tina, the founder, Tina Patterson, the founder of Hunt of a Lifetime. She spends a, uh, when she uh, before she retired, she was a school bus driver. Um, she's retired now, so she spends 100% of her time when she's not vetting kids or or coordinating hunts or or doing what she does to have to keep the kids, you know, moving forward with their trips. She is out fundraising. She travels all over um, Pennsylvania, Ohio, West Virginia, you know, the, the tri-state area, and that's what she does. She is setting up a table and a booth at sports shows at fairs at wherever she can think of to um to help fundraise and collect money um to put these hunts on they do uh raffles they have all kinds of things going on but at the same time she has ambassadors all over the country that are doing the same thing on that on their behalf um raising that money you know tina's story is kind of cool and the whole the whole way that that hunt of a lifetime um was founded is that she had a son who was diagnosed with cancer, I believe, and he was uh, as a member of Make-A-Wish, and he wanted to go on a hunt. That was his wish, but Make-A-Wish said that hunting was unethical, so his wish was not granted. So she founded Hunt of a Lifetime 
to <laughs> provide right. a hunt for her son, but also to, to create this legacy that we know as kind of a lifetime now for the rest of these kids. So kind of a cool story. Her son has since passed away from his, from his cancer, but um, yeah, that's what she does. That's what her organization yeah. does. Um, very, another very close, uh, close tie that I have that we work with is their board president. She's the founder. Um, the board president, his name is uh, Blaine Bergen. He's my contact now that we deal with. Uh, we do a lot of coordinating of hunts and, Matter of fact, I spoke with him tonight about the David Wiles hunt. So we're uh, trying to get all the all the balls in motion for that hunt. It, it looks it's looking like it's going to be the first week of October. So we're just trying to, trying to get things planned out. Um, David uh, David wants to hunt with his bow. So this is uh, this will be oh. a new and uh, interesting challenge. Uh, for hunt of a lifetime and for for camo cares, you know most of the hunts that we that we are that we go on are with a rifle. But uh, David's weapon of choice is his bow. So this is going to be interesting. I'm not going to lie. I'm looking forward to it, and and I know he is, and and we're trying to give him, you know, in coordination with hunt of a lifetime, trying to give him the best possible hunt that he can get with his bow. <laughs> yeah. Do Do you have That's a state true. picked out yet? I'm not sure that I'm allowed to divulge that yet. So I'd like no, to no, that that's in fine. my hip pocket if I can. Yeah, that's per- totally fine. Totally fine. Yeah. So you mentioned, bow, the, you mentioned yeah, the Hunt yeah. of a Lifetime is a, obviously a national organization. Is Camo Cares the biggest contributor to Hunt of a Lifetime? Or is there other organizations kind of like Camo Cares throughout the nation that kind of donates to or contributes to? I don't know the for sure the answer to that question but i would say if we're not the top do donator that we are in the top five for sure to the hunt of a lifetime organization yeah. imagine how much more money you'd make if you had a dog show as long as it wasn't at freiburg sportsman's club <laughs> we're okay you can have a doggy parade going down that long driveway they've got up there yeah so um so yeah, we've we've had people on listening now for a while. The the, the next question we're going to get is, you know, how can we donate? How can we get involved? You know, um, are there places they can go? I, I, your Camo Cares website, have them directly go to any of these organizations. What what do you recommend for all that? Yeah, I mean, as far as Camo Cares, uh, we do have a website. It's camocares.org. Um, we are currently looking for somebody to help us with some website maintenance. It's been one of my um, Achilles heels. But um, so some of the information is not like some of the pictures of the vets and, and the, ch- the children are not quite as up to date as I would like them to be. Matter of fact, we we've got a little group message going on with the board right now about finding somebody that can do our website updates for us. But the important part is there. Um, there is a donation button there. You can go on to the to the website, camocares.org, and there is a, a button for donating and it's a PayPal account. So you can donate directly to our PayPal account. Um, if you, if you're not computer savvy and you don't trust PayPal and you want to write us a check, we would love to have a check from you as well. So our mailing address is at the bottom of the page. You can send it, send a check right to us. Uh, we are a 501c3 nonprofit. So your donation is tax deductible and all the information um, that you would need for that is also on our website. Um, my contact information is there. Uh, we have an email address there. So, you know, if people have questions, they can reach out reach out to me or reach out to any one of us on the board. But again, all that contact information is on the website, if that's helpful. Yeah, that's awesome. One of the other things I want to touch on before I forget, um, one of the most impressive things that I noticed that's been, I, I don't think this was always there, at least I don't remember it, but I was always busy with one thing or another when I was up there before, um, was the, the the bikers, the riders that, that, that lead the families in. I mean, it's not... It, it's an extravaganza, right? I mean, the, the show kind of stops and the families and the veterans come rolling in and they're escorted by, well, I'll let you, I'll let you explain it. Yeah. So we started that, you know, several years ago. Um, we have a local limousine company, Primetime Limo. I'll give them a shout out. Primetime Limo out of Knox, Pennsylvania, Randy Theron and his crew. They uh, have always gone over to, typically we house our, our guests. Uh, our families and our, our our veterans, we call them our heroes, our heroes and their families. We house them in Clarion. It's about the biggest uh, local place that has actual hotels that you can stay in. But uh, we, we 
we bring all the the heroes from the hotels in Clarion via limousine. And a few years ago, we were contacted by the American Legion riders um, out of Knox and out of Clarion, PA, and they wanted to know. Obviously, they had heard that we were working with veterans, and they wanted to be part of of the of the day. So they asked if they they have a great big network of of bikers. They reach out all over Western Pennsylvania, and it's it, it, they're called the American Legion Riders, and that they show up at events like this, and they provide motorcycle escort and so now <laughs> it started out with five or ten in the in the first you know first year to 15 or 20 to 50 i think last year we counted 120 or 125 <laughs> motorcycles <laughs> that led the way into the and you can hear them coming for miles i think it's 19 miles from clarion to freiburg and about five or six miles out, the ground starts to rumble. Like you can hear them coming <laughs> and uh, they escort the limo in the bikers all line up and, and they're all sporting their patriotic gear and their American flags and their POW MIA flags. And, and they line the whole driveway up there at Freiburg and then they back the limos right up through the crowd. And then we unload our, our heroes for the year. And it's, uh, it's humbling. It's humbling, if nothing else, to, to watch that happen. And you can't help but be a proud American um, when you're standing there watching that happen. And then, you know, once once they're all there and settled, they, they bring their color guard as well and they present the colors. And as the veterans come out, um, they're greeted by the American Legion riders president. Um, they say a few words, they exchange um, challenge coins, the whole deal. I mean, it's, it's uh it's a pretty cool thing to watch and it's a pretty cool thing to be part of that's awesome yeah so you mentioned third week of june right so for those who are looking to maybe make a trek to really really understand this there are places relatively local they can stay if they're from out of town um you also have camping correct. available there correct how quickly does that fill up when does that open up very quickly uh, how does that go very quickly right same same with the archery <laughs> shoot very quickly you better be on your computer <laughs> yeah the, but, uh, uh, the do you have the idea of when those open up so folks who are out of town that may want to come and, and visit would be able to to check it out yeah so camping typically opens uh middle of april and we try to extend the invitations first to those folks that have camped with us before um, folks that have supported us for before uh, obviously our heroes uh their families as well as uh, our volunteers that are helping put on the event you know it's typically a couple of days to get ready for the event as well as the event and then the day after cleanup um so there's typically a handful of um, camping spots available after that's all over with, but they can, uh, people can monitor our website again for the, for the camping dates. But um, the event you mentioned third week of June, it is June 24th this year, June 24th, 2023. Um, camping will open in, in April as well as so will the archery shoot. Um, you know, we didn't talk about that whole day of events yet, but archery shoot, as you mentioned, is in the morning. Typically we have somewhere between 350 and 450, uh, folks shooting our 3d archery course. So as soon as that opens up again, that, uh, it's through, a it's through, a, a registration site called Reg Fox, but there'll be a link on our website. You just click that link. It'll take you right in. You can get signed up. You can register your team and, and. It's a pretty cool thing. So the rest of the days of events, go ahead and yeah, so, roll through some so, of the other things. So after about. the archery shoot, you mentioned the greatest raffle ever. It is uh, it is a pretty cool raffle. We have lots of – am I allowed to say the word guns on this podcast? Oh, yeah. Okay, just check it. Yeah. Presented by Realtree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, presented so, by Real. Exactly. I think, we didn't mention that yet. I think last year we <laughs> had uh, north of 20 guns, including a custom Camo Cares uh, AR. Um, so the gun selection is quite large, but um, donations from others. And again, this is all stuff that is donated to our organization. We don't pay a dime for the prizes, but we get knives donated and tree stands and and i mean you name it if it's hunting related somebody is probably donating it to us um 
Bucks and Boats, dressers, chairs. Right. <laughs> Came back with a recliner last yeah, year. Yeah, I mean, there's <laughs> literally the prizes are amazing. And, and it's not just for the hunters. I mean, like you mentioned, we've right. had the, the last few years, we've had um, like a coffee stand, coffee nook donated, uh, Briar Hill Furniture donates outdoor furniture or sometimes bedroom furniture, you know, a full bedroom set made of pine logs, that sort of thing. Um, cornhole boards and baskets for just about anything that you can think of but all that stuff is donated last year we had over 140 prizes that we gave away um during our raffle uh we've it's pretty we've seen we've got a new prize coordinator his name's kevin chaff and he is relentless with uh, if you're in the outdoor industry you've probably gotten an email from kevin in the last two years but uh <laughs> lots of people have stepped up stepped up to help um swagger bipods j and j feeds all those guys from you know we got some good buddies from the old days that um have continued to support us and and send us pallets full of products to give away um fox pro is another one you know lots and lots of cool partners that we have that are still willing to support what we do to help these kids and vets and 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 the, as you mentioned the raffle second to none yeah and then after the raffle, talk about the Oh, sorry. I was just going to say that after the raffle in the old days, we had bands, but uh, the, the bands became more of, I guess I'll just throw it out there. We can't, the bands became more of a problem than they did a benefit to the organization. So with the cleanup and some of the headaches that were involved with that, um, it didn't bring any, I mean, it was a good time and a great way to blow off steam. I'm not going to lie. Um, and a lot of us look forward to that, but it didn't bring anything to the benefit of the kids or anything to the benefit of the vets, to our heroes. Um, so we switched from bands to a cornhole tournament and it has been hugely, hugely possible. Uh, um, it's been an exciting thing to do. The, uh, and I'm going to throw this out there. You guys both know Brian and John Kane. They're three, oh, they went again last three year. time chance. Um, we need somebody to knock oh. them off the throne. So if you're a corn, I'm going to start this year. If you're a corn, I'm going to start master, throwing you, now. Yeah, start throwing now. I I got a I got a buddy that I used to work with that he's a professional cornhole guy out of Idaho. I might just pay for his trip in <laughs> and let him play in the tournament, um, so we can uh, bring some humility to the Kane brothers. But speaking well, speaking of the, Kane of the brothers i was gonna say <laughs> speaking of the Kane brothers you i was it. getting we're on the same page here uh yeah. i want you to talk a real quick about i know they started an organization and other people and contributors to camo cares have started organizations do you want to talk about your big contributors and the people around that community that have started and then have contributed huge amounts to camo cares talk about that for a little bit you know it's funny um I mentioned a couple of different times the Camo Cares family. Um, we are a family and we, we are a community of, of again, like-minded people with big hearts. And it's fun to sit back and watch some of these organizations that have, have spun off, have taken the idea of, of helping others and, and come up with their own organization or their own fundraiser or their own way of making money and then bringing some of that money back to camo cares you know a big one is aiden's army uh, joe and julie carroll started aiden's army um, after they lost their son aiden um, uh, with the the sole purpose of helping others that that need were you know financially strapped or whatever but camo cares is, is a big benefactor of aiden's army and and we lost julie this past year um, and that was tough. It was tough for Joe and tough for the Aiden's Army organization and, and tough for the Camo Cares family. But but Aiden's Army will continue this year. They will have their fall shoot in September. So we're, we're happy to have those guys as partners. Um, you mentioned the Canes, uh, Hunting for Hope. They, they've created a. They started with a golf outing, um, you know, and, and they've now created a foundation and they're doing um, all kinds of different things outside the golf outing. They just did a pheasant hunt not too long ago. But they're they're going out and they're raising money, and uh, we've got a group out of Butler called the Herman Hunters. Um, they're huge uh, partners of ours and contributors of ours, and they're they're just a bunch of of like-minded people with big hearts. I keep saying that, um, and 
you know, I spent quite a bit of time with the Herman Hunters and they're, they're a fun, they're a fun bunch of people to hang out with the, the Schnorrs, uh, if you know them, but, um, I just got invited to their, uh, their game dinner that's coming up here in a couple of weeks. So I'm looking forward to going down to that and, and breaking bread with them and, and enjoying their fellowship. Uh, in addition to another organization out of Butler called the Hidden Helpers, uh, uh, Olivia and Cam Neal, they started an organization um, after seeing what we did at Camo Cares. She started as a as a high school student, and her senior project was to raise money to donate to Camo Cares. And you know, she continues. Her and her husband Cam to this day, uh, you know, are doing the same thing, raising money and and helping support Camo Cares. So. It's really, really cool to sit back and see some of these other groups that are spinning off and spawning into their own their own funds generation, and it's it's really cool. And we're we're really happy to have all of them on board, and and I love them like my own family, all of them. So we we, we truly appreciate them. Yeah, we just uh, Kyle and I just signed up for the uh, golf outing this year. We're signing up for the Canes golf outing. Kyle's gonna get back here from Missouri for that weekend yep, nice. uh, just that's 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 warning you as much as it's letting you know <laughs> just you know so you know he's coming back um but yeah I mean, you, you know i started that organization up in, in butler uh the helping butler county thing that i started up years ago yeah and i, I agree with you seeing people do spinoffs these ones that pop up kind of popcorn things that kind of pop off of the thing you're doing and they're they have that same mindset like you were talking about is one of the most one of my favorite things. I mean, it really is because it, it shows you in a way that there are so many people out there who, who want to help. And sometimes they just struggle to find a way to do it. They struggle to find a path to, they, they want to do something, but where do I start? How do I get this started? And, you know, thanks to organizations like yours that are also so open about helping those folks, you know, Hey, how, how do I go about doing this? I, I know for a fact that you'll, you'll sit down with them and say, Oh, Hey, you know, if you have any questions, let me know, but just, just start doing, just start doing, and it'll, it'll end up happening. And um, I think it was Aiden's army this year. Was the one. It's awfully hard to take pictures when I'm crying <laughs> up there as they're doing all these presentations, um, you know. But yeah, that was a that was a tough one. I think that was was that the one that, this year that was due to their loss and um, the the sheer amount. I mean, it's it's such an interesting day because it's so joyous and there's so much happiness going on because we're so many great things are happening and so many people are pulling together. But at the same time, it hurts so bad. Like th there's fear in there of the future for a lot of these folks. Right. There's pain for the people that have already been lost and recently been lost most of the time, right? Um, or for a lot of that. And the memories of those who may maybe weren't even recent, but you know, as you said, there's so many meaningful stories that have already passed through um, and it's all kind of dredged up in that one day. It's a, um, it's, it's an emotional day and from on all, on all ends of it. You know, um, so again, I'd encourage anyone who's within any kind of any kind of travel distance to 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 mark that day off on your calendar and and make sure you get there. There's room. Yeah. There there will be room, uh, and not because it's not full. It's because it's in massive fields. So <laughs> there's there's room just because there's room. Um, but yeah, if if you're listening and you're at all interested, please hit up camocares.org. Uh, learn about the great organization itself, as well as uh, the organizations that it contributes to. The the great folks, including Kirk here, um, who were so thankful was able to join us today um, to talk a little bit about it and give us you know some some taste to our listeners of of what happens that day. But um, I don't know. Do you, have, do you have anything else you want to wrap up with? Or yeah, I mean, we, we, could... touched, we touched a little bit about, you know, the veterans. I don't want to leave them out of this. Um, you know, we sure. talked a lot about Hunt of a Lifetime and the kids, but, you know, just as, as much uh, as the kids deserve um, these hunts, so do the veterans. And, and I've had the Absolutely. opportunity to travel, especially this past fall, I had the opportunity to travel with the Military Warrior Support Foundation and a couple of their heroes uh, to New Mexico. And I can't tell you where in New Mexico we were sworn to secrecy. So you'll see when the video comes out, <laughs> we were somewhere in New Mexico. But, you know, I had the opportunity to, to spend a week with those guys. Um, and I tell you, man, you want to talk about humbling. 
to yeah. to sit there, to sit around the campfire and listen to the hell that these guys have been through. Um, it, it, I have no words, but humble. I was humbled to do, to be in their presence and to listen yeah. to their stories and the things that these guys have gone through, these guys and girls, the, our, our heroes, the things that they've gone through to be able to do, to be able to allow us to do what we do here to, and enjoy our freedoms and, and have raffles and archery shoots and, and give away guns and, and, and do the things that we do. But th- that was probably the most favorite part of, of my, you know, we killed some ginormous bulls and the hunts were great and the stories were awesome. But the part that meant the most to me was sitting around the campfire and just listening to these guys talk. Um, I think it was, uh, I know it was therapy for them, you know, being able to share stories with their, their, um, their own other veterans. But to me, just the, the appreciation that I gained just from listening to a handful of stories, those guys are amazing. Um, and, 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 you know, that's part of what drives me to keep, this organization moving forward and doing what we need to do. And it's not just me, you know, I, I'm the kind of the, the spokesperson in the face guy right here today, but I have, there's nine people on the board of directors, the executive board of directors. And, and we, we meet monthly and we make decisions, you know, that, that help this organization to continue to move forward. So, you know, I thank, thank all of them. I, I'm just a piece of the puzzle. Um, I'm the pretty face, Howie. Yeah, I was going to say, they chose you to be the face. There's an irony in there, right. for sure. <laughs> but um, you Speaking know, of which, yeah, I want to see the oldest picture you have of you on that wall behind you. You need to bring that up and hold it in front of the camera <laughs> at one of these points here before it's we have there, there is one of yeah, them, but cool. I actually have hair. Oh, you've got to bring that over here. <laughs> Are you 12 years old? Well, he's going. He's going for it. Yes. Yes. Oh, oh yeah. There. Oh, look at that guy. Me and my beautiful <laughs> bride. That's the face right there. No wonder. Uh, that's that's probably who they thought they were getting to be the spokesperson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we, uh, like I said, we they. I'm just a piece of the puzzle. There's a it's, there's a lot of moving pieces, and and we're we're each good at our own thing, and we come together as a team and, and we work hard. And like I said, we meet monthly. It's like you said, it's a lot of planning, you know, as soon as the event is over in June, you know, in July, we're talking about what went right and what went wrong and, and what we need to do different and, and how do we make it better? So we meet on a regular basis and, and um, we make it happen and we hope to continue to make it happen. Yeah. So for sure, it's, it's good stuff. So, man. Uh, good stuff. So uh, for all you listeners, um, camocares.org is the website. There's a lot of information on there of how to donate, how to attend, how to register for the bow shoot if you want to go. Um, watch the videos there. Uh, do you guys have a Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or anything you share any information on? On It's on our Facebook page as well. Okay, there is a Facebook page. So there's, there's a, a Facebook, Facebook page. page. Go to that. Um, and I would like to have you on again to uh, – talk more about the hunt you've been on and get some stories from the hunts and stuff. And okay. Maybe yeah. we can hook up with a hook up with a veteran or something to come on and tell some stories too. That'd be awesome. So Absolutely. Kirk, I appreciate you. I appreciate you being on and thanks for joining us tonight. How you got anything? I'm good, brother. Any final words, Kirk? No, Kirk? I just uh, want to say thank you for the opportunity to come on and, and tell you the story and, and I'll go word for word with Howie any day. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> but no i just yeah uh, just, we need we need to we need to golf sometime soon and we'll just send pictures to kyle and mock him for moving away okay i'm all, I'm all good with that well, not sometime soon it's february but yeah as soon as we can we'll get out there sounds so. good to me i just uh, again want to say thank you for the opportunity to tell you a little bit more about our story and if you have any questions please don't hesitate to reach out to us we uh we'll uh, we'll answer any questions you have and and uh we'll take good care of you Sounds great. Look forward to having you on again soon. Thank you. Appreciate you, Kirk. Thank you, brother. All right. Peace out.
That has been the Corn Thicket Podcast. We are presented by Realtree. Thanks for joining us. Peace. The Corn Thicket Podcast with Kyle and Howie, presented by Realtree. Tree.